Plants have a purpose, and knowing why you are planting will help you with what tree to plant in your specific situation. After doing a site review and a site analysis, we found that this part of the lawn is prolonged wet and has a little bit of a drainage issue. So when we went to the nursery, we wanted to pick a plant that was good for wet conditions. So we chose this river birch, which is a containerized grown tree, and we're going to plant that here today. Buried utilities are everywhere, and digging without knowing the location of underground wires and pipes can be dangerous and costly. Call 811 before you put a shovel in the ground. The planting hole is a tree's home for its lifetime, so digging for proper depth and width is important. One to one and a half times the ball width is plenty for establishment. Current research indicates that hole width is not nearly as critical as depth. Now that's another story. Excessive planting depth has been found to be one of the most critical errors during the installation process. There are some key indicators to help with finding the proper depth. First, be sure to find the root flare. This is located at the soil level and gives rise to the root system below. Second, be sure to remove the soil on top of the ball to expose that root flare down to the main order root system. Buried root flares can lead to decline, tree failure, and eventually death of the tree. Trees are either typically purchased as container grown or bald and burlap stock. Today we're going to plant a container grown tree. And one of the advantages of container grown trees is the fact that all of the roots are grown with the tree. As opposed to bald and burlap trees in which a majority of the roots, almost 80% are left behind when the tree is harvested. However, one of the main concerns with container grown trees is the container itself. Solid wall containers are circular, which causes a dysfunctional root system. Tree roots are supposed to grow laterally, however, when they hit the wall of the container, they're deflected and grow either in a circular pattern or they're deflected downward. This could cause issues with the health of the tree later on and even cause stability issues leading to tree failure. Of course, one of the main things you want to do with a container grown tree is make sure you remove the tree from the container. Now that we have the tree out of the container, we can do a couple of things. First of all, we want to inspect the top of the tree to make sure the root flare is visible. And also we want to check the roots to see if we have any of those circling or girdling roots which can cause problems for the tree later on. So what do we do about these girdling roots to prevent these issues later on in the tree's life? Well, current research indicates that the best way to prevent girdling roots and to get rid of the circling and deflective roots is to do a boxing or slicing treatment of the root ball. And this is simply just cutting off the outer inch on four cardinal directions to get rid of those trained circling roots. What you're actually doing is pruning the root system to allow new roots to grow laterally into the neighboring soil to create a strong, stable tree. Now that we've completed our root treatment by boxing off the girdling roots, we're now ready to finish installing the tree just like any other tree medium. Backfill the tree using native soils, that which came right out of the planting pit that you just dug. Amendments aren't recommended and they actually could slow establishment. Also, never fertilize a newly planted tree. It's best to wait at least a year before you apply any fertilizer. One of the finishing touches of planting a tree, of course, is adding some mulch. This will help reduce evaporation, reduce watering needs, and protect the plant as a visual cue for those operating lawn equipment. Make sure when mulching you don't mound a lot of mulch up around the trunk. Make sure you leave a little space there for aeration so that you don't get any disease issues later on. Of course, one of the final touches in the planting process is watering. Make sure you water your new tree well to make sure it gets off to a good start and then water as needed. When watering a tree, I like to follow the five plus five rule, which means add five gallons of water plus an additional five gallons for each inch of trunk diameter. So for a three inch tree, this would be 20 gallons of water but be sure to get in there and check that soil to make sure that it does need water. Never water without first going in there and checking the soil to be sure that it is dry. We've just planted a container grown tree. Now we're going to move to a bald and burlap tree. The protocols are about the same, but there's a few distinct differences.
As we mentioned earlier, trees are purchased either as container stocked or embalmed in burlap materials. Today we're going to focus our attention on installing a bald and burlap tree right here in this parking island. Planting width needs to be at least one to one and a half times the width of the ball. This B&B tree is 28 inches across, so our planting pit will need to be at least 42 inches wide to accommodate the root system and allow for root expansion. Remember, width is important to tree planting. However, the final depth of the planting pit is critical for long-term health and survival of the tree. Be sure to remove the upper third to one half of the materials around the bald media to prevent any root obstructions. It isn't necessary to remove the entire basket and burlap as it creates a risk of disturbing the soil root interface, slowing establishment and reducing stability. Be sure to remove the trunk guard and rope so that it doesn't inhibit trunk expansion and girdle the stem. Now we're ready to finish installing the tree and it's pretty much like any other medium whether it's container grown or bald and burlap. Now let's place the plant in the pit and position it straight and true in its new home. Again, we want to make sure that the root flare is exposed for the final grade of the tree. And as you can see here, our root flare in the top of our ball is exactly perfectly in line with the existing grade. So it looks like we had the proper depth for this particular tree. Of course, the final part of the planting process is enjoying watching your tree grow. Be sure to monitor its condition. Check for yellowing leaves, any premature leaf drop, or anything that's abnormal for its growth. Check for pests on occasion to be sure that there's no insects or diseases that could be affecting your tree's health. And then just sit back and watch it mature into a great tree. This certainly isn't all there is to tree planting, so if you would like more information, go to the Education Store and download the publication Tree Installation Process and Practices.